Hello, my name is Kate Guthrie Caruso, and I am the scientist of RG MOOC headquarters. If you are new to our MOOC, it is RG MOOC, Rhetoric and Composition, the Persuasive Power of Video Games as Paratext. Please feel free to join in our MOOC at bit.ly forward slash RG MOOC course. Today I'm going to be talking about developing paragraphs. Okay. Um, just like essays, there is a formal structure to a paragraph that we should be conscious of. And today I'm going to be talking about body paragraphs or standalone paragraphs. We will come back and talk about introduction and concluding paragraphs later on in the course. Okay, so there are essentially three different things that are essential to um, the structure of a paragraph. A topic sentence, which is the most important piece. Unification of that um, uh, topic sentence through the support that you give and use of critical strategies to develop that support. Okay, I'm going to talk about all three of these bullet points um, as I go through this PowerPoint. So topic sentences first because they are um, the key, the foundation of every body paragraph or standalone paragraph. So what is a topic sentence? Topic sentences reveal the main point of the paragraph. They connect that paragraph to the essay's thesis, if it is indeed a body paragraph. And they are arguable. They make a claim that the paragraph will then prove. I like to call them mini thesis statements. Okay, so a thesis statement is essentially the argument that the par or that the essay is going to prove. Okay? So a topic sentence then is on a smaller scale. The topic sentence is stating what the argument is that the paragraph is going to prove. So, thesis statement is the overall essay. Topic sentence is the argument of the paragraph. Okay? And each topic sentence builds on top of each other. So we have argument building upon argument building upon argument to prove the overall argument, which is the thesis. Okay? So, topic sentences then cannot be statements of fact. This is, I think, one of the biggest issues that I have with students. Um, you need to make sure that you put it to the test. Make sure it is not a factual statement, okay? Um, so, um, frequently I will have students um, that don't ask themselves the question, um, is it arguable or prove it, okay? If I'm not asking myself prove it, I may have something wrong. All right, so we are gonna take a look at um, a paragraph that I selected from one of the texts we have for the course. Um, this is from Kelly Weiss's Paratext, The Beating Heart of a Text. Okay. Um, and we're going to actually deconstruct this a little bit and take a look at how it's operating. So in the first sentence, um, usually you will find the first sentence is the topic sentence. Um, we'll talk about a few exceptions later. Okay. So when we look at the clear topic sentences, what we need first is what is the main point of the paragraph? What do you expect it to prove, in other words? Okay, so let's take a look. In Season 2, Episode 2, The Hounds at Baskerville, John Watson and the audience experience the power of the paratext. Okay, so when we take a look at this, what exactly do we expect this paragraph to talk about and to prove? Well, John Watson and the audience experience the power of the paratext. So we expect that this paragraph is indeed going to be talking about that power of the paratext and the experience that the audience has and John Watson has throughout the paragraph. Number two, is this an arguable statement? Okay, so we are making sure that this is not a statement of fact. Well, um, is the idea that experiencing the power of a paratext um, a statement of fact? No, we are asking ourselves, for the um, author, Kelly Wise, to prove it. And finally, can you connect to the essay's thesis? Now, I don't have the full text here. If you want to log on to RG MOOC, you can go ahead and check and see, um, and see if this topic sentence makes any direct connection to the overall thesis as well, and put it to that test. Okay, so there are other forms of topic sentences that I want to cover briefly. Um, there are complex sentences. Okay. So let's say you begin a paragraph combined um, with a transition from the previous paragraph. That's absolutely acceptable, especially if you want to further a point. Okay. Um, so you, you may be finishing up just slightly a point and then furthering it on um, in your next paragraph. And, and by doing that, you'll need a complex sentence. 
Okay, questions. I very much forewarn students about using these. Frequently they like to use rhetorical questions and that becomes an issue. Okay, questions must demand an answer and then your paragraph must then prove that answer through an argument. Okay, so if you don't have a clear argument in mind, asking a question may not be the best way to go. But it is a formal thesis. And finally, pivots. Okay. Pivots are when you don't have your thesis statement at the beginning of the paragraph. Usually you'll find these when the paragraph changes direction midway. So most commonly you find these in counter arguments. So for instance, if I were to start with a concession, um, I may then have a pivot, so my topic sentence may come midway. Um, so I have my concession and then um, I change the direction, not the topic, but the direction of where I'm going in my paragraph and then that's where I state actually what I'm going to be arguing and proving. All right, focusing your paragraph through unification. Okay, so this is bullet point two. Okay, have logical progression of details, always working to prove that topic sentence. Okay, repeat keywords or phrases to clue readers in to the progression of that argument. And finally, use transitional words and phrases to add an idea, present a contrasting idea, or draw a conclusion. And all of these tie back to that thesis or to that topic state, uh, topic sentence. Excuse me. All right. So, the logical flow. Let's take a look. Okay. Um, I've highlighted each sentence individually so we can kind of see how the paragraph progresses. All the moments leading up to Watson's caged experience in the lab led to his conclusion, and possibly the audience's, that he was in danger of attack from a monstrous beast that had somehow managed to find its way into the lab. Okay, so this is um, his conclusion, okay, um, his, his experience, um, his conclusion of the experience, right? So the next sentence, his vision of the hound is solely based upon previous information given to him, red eyes, black fur, enormous stature, and the audience shares in this visceral effect. Okay, um, You'll be noticing these keywords are starting to be repeated, audience and audience, for instance. We'll see this in the next slide. Okay, um, But we're getting the progression and ideas as well. So we, we're moving from the conclusion to the vision um, that he got um, from other people. Okay, Without the eyewitness accounts, Watson would likely have deduced a less threatening cause to the noises within the lab. Okay, so again, we're progressing forward in a logical way. Reality is then questioned once Watson doubts his perceptive abilities. And finally, the show seems to be suggesting the development of a filter, questioning, ephemeral evidence, testing, nothing, as so much of our thoughts and perceptions are framed by outside forces. Okay, and that concludes it up and ties it back into our topic sentence. Okay, so that paratextuality. All right, so steps two and three, repeat keywords and phrases and use transitional words. Okay, um, what I've done is I've highlighted the keywords, um, the repeated words um, throughout this. So we can kind of get an idea. I pointed out the audience um, in the last one. Okay, we get experience, okay, multiple times, monstrous beast, hound, these are related, right? Vision, visceral effect, eyewitness accounts, okay? So these are all kind of moving us along and creating a unity, okay, of the paragraph so that we feel the flow, okay? The same is true with transitional words throughout this. Now this doesn't have um, as many traditional transitional words as you might find, um, but we are absolutely seeing that natural progression. Okay, if you want a li full list of transitional words, they're um, available um, on the internet. All right, finally, critical strategies in paragraphing. So this is the final step. Okay, so you're going to use a many different, you don't need to use all of these, um, but at different times you'll use a couple of these, um, depending on what kind of argument you're trying to make. So examples and illustrations. As we just saw in the last um, text that I showed you, that's exactly what's happening. They're using examples and illustrations from that text. Okay. 
narratives and anecdotes. So narrative is a story over um, a period of time. An anecdote is simply that, that um, a, a moment in time, okay? So a short story, basically, uh, a, 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 an incredibly short story. It doesn't progress over time. Citing data, facts, stats, details, etc. Um, some of your directive co-ops will be asking you to engage with um, citing information. Analyzing text, and in this course we are defining text quite broadly, okay, so as you've noticed, even the video games are text, and um, the videos that we have you watching are considered text. So analyzing text is um, absolutely something you may want to do in a, as a critical strategy in your paragraphing. Defining terms, you may find when you're writing a paragraph that you need to define certain things. And making comparisons. And finally, examining cause and effect. All right, so that is all for today. If you have questions or comments, please contact me. Just remember that creating a paragraph is all about that organizational structure and always tying it back to your topic sentence and then making sure that body of the paragraph ties into your thesis statement and you will be on the track to making a very convincing argument. Thank you very much. This is I'm Kate Guthrie Caruso, and I hope to talk to you soon.